Heather Wells and the Single Mom Blog present Single Mom Success, the place for single moms to find support, inspiration, and the path to their own success. Hey everybody and welcome to today's Single Mom Success Podcast. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Uh, I am actually recording this podcast on a Tuesday. Typically I try and get them out on Mondays, but uh, we have just started our summer vacation here in my household and yesterday was the first day that all three of my children were home all together all day long and it was a bit um, chaotic would be the nice way of putting it. (laughs) Um, There was definitely a lot of tension and stress and and, and irritation, and so it's definitely going to take us a little while to get back into the groove of being with each other all day long. Uh, So there was uh, many, many fights, many arguments, lots of tears. Um, There was uh, definitely a lot of screaming, and that was just from... Uh, them (laughs) before I even got into the mix and then of course it you know got a little bit worse Um, but uh, it definitely brought up uh, today's podcast topic which is uh, I'm actually going to be doing a series of blog posts Uh, they may be podcasts like this one is today they may be just regular plain old podcast or not podcast rather but blog posts uh, on surviving summer vacation So our uh, dynamic is a little different because of the fact that I work from home. So it's definitely harder in some aspects. It's great in others. Um, So I'm going to kind of today go over the pros and cons of being a stay-at-home, work-at-home mom while your children are on summer vacation. (laughs) So um, to start with the pros, because I always want to start on a positive note, um, the pros of, of staying home with my kids and being around on summer vacation is that I get to do a lot of really cool stuff during the day with my kids that, you know, not all parents get to do. Not all moms or dads, whether they're single parents or not, get to just decide that in the middle of the day, we're going to go to the zoo. And I get to do that with my kids. Or, hey, let's go to the pool real quick. Um And not everybody gets to have that opportunity because they work in an office and they have to go to work during the day. Uh, And so during the prime day time hours of the summer, they're at work while their children are either, you know, depending on the age of their child, they're either at home or they're in a child care facility. And that's not to say that they don't have fun while at the child care facility, but, you know, they're having fun at the child care facility and you're at work. Not as much fun, (laughs) right? Um, And... So, you know, then the parents come home at the end of the day, and unfortunately, a lot of times parents are really tired, and that's when the kids are like, Mom, Dad, you're home, it's summer, let's go do something fun, and um, they don't always have the energy or ability to do that, and so, um, and I remember that, going through summer, uh, dropping my kids off at the daycare, working my shift, getting off of work, driving through rush hour, not to mention driving through rush hour just makes me absolutely insane, Uh, It's worse now that I work from home and I don't have to do it anymore. So if by chance I actually do get caught in rush hour, I have the worst road rage feelings and, and, you know, not so bad that I would actually like hit or hurt anybody. But I do. I I yell at people and I, I sit there and I get so frustrated. I'm like, oh, my God, how did I do this for so many years? I don't I don't know how I, I managed to sit through that. Just torture. I, I, it's like torture for me. <laughs> it really is. Um So, you know, I remember that. And then by the time I got to pick them up and then got them to the house, I was so tired and frazzled and worn out from my day that, like, I didn't really want to do anything. I didn't have the energy to do anything. And it really sucked for them, I'm sure, because that's, they're like, Mom, we want to go do cool stuff with you. We've missed you all day. And I'm so tired that I just didn't want to do it you know or even when we did I was just sort of half half half-assing it because I was really just so burnt out so that's a definite pro for me to be able to just say okay I'm going to schedule my business and my work so that I stop work at one o'clock in the afternoon and then that's our time or I'm going to schedule my day tomorrow so that we don't that I don't start working until two and we're going to go to the zoo early um, and spend a lot of the day there and then we'll come home and then I'll work when I get back. Um, so just having that flexibility is awesome. It's really awesome. I love being able to do that. 
Um, and then, you know, being able to take my kids to the pool and I can sit back away from the pool and even take my computer with me, my laptop, and still work even while the kids are at the pool, you know, or when we go to the park, they can play at the park. I'm still there and I can still do things while I'm at the park. So it really definitely affords me a lot more flexibility with my time and my schedule and my ability to be with my kids. And I absolutely adore it every single second of it. Um, from that aspect, the cons of working from home <laughs> during the summer is that my children don't seem to always remember that just because they're on summer break doesn't mean I'm on summer break too. That while I do have a flexible schedule and I can work what hours I want, I do still have to work some of those hours. <laughs> uh, especially if we want to pay for any of the fun stuff that they want to do over the summer. So that's definitely a, a con of working from home and having my kids home for the summer. Uh, as well as it, it can be very distracting and it is definitely harder. It's a bigger challenge to stay focused and maintain uh, my working hours because of the fact that I do have to get up every so often and, and referee a fight or, you know, I have them coming in and, and walking in and saying, hey, you know, I have this question or hey, so-and-so did that or hey, did you know that blah, 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 you know, or can I go play with friends or so there's definitely a lot more interruptions. Um, but, you know, as far as between the pros and cons of staying at home and working from home with the kids, um, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. The cons are definitely very frustrating, but, um, the other downside is that I do have to play referee <laughs> constantly, uh, because they are together so much during the day now, uh, they're definitely rubbing each other the wrong way. And, uh, having the twin boys who, you know, are teenagers now, they want to do, and they're, and they're boys, they want to do teenage boy things. They want to be boys and they want to be left alone or they want to play video games or they want to watch their show or they want to be in their room. Um, and I don't know if it's just my boys or if all boys are go, like go through this phase when they're when they reach this age where they, they sort of become little shut ins in their rooms. I don't know. Maybe it's not just mine. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if your son does the same thing as a teenager that he just sort of shuts himself in his room for long periods of time. But um my daughter, she wants to play. She wants to play with them. She wants to do stuff. And that's definitely a hard thing too because it seems like she wants she like wants constant stimulation. It's like it's really hard for her to go from school where during the day she's uh, doing work with her teacher and she's got her friends and there's constant stimulation going on all day long. They're doing something. She's either working or reading, talking to her friends, talking to the teacher, moving from one activity to the next. And at home, she's sort of responsible for finding those things on her own if I don't provide them for her. And even if I do provide them for her, um, she still, it's like she feels like she needs to be <laughs> Or rather, I perceive it as like she needs to be entertained. And that's a really hard aspect for me as well. We've been dealing with that the last couple of days of, I understand that you really, really want my attention right now, but I really have to focus on work. And I will give you my attention as soon as I finish or I get to this time, uh, cutoff time. So having gone through that yesterday and part of today, uh, I realized that it was definitely time to kind of nip this in the bud, that we had to come up with a routine and strategies and things to do so that we all survive and are mostly sane through at the end of summer. <laughs> because at this point, uh, I'm going to end up going crazy and the kids are going to go crazy and it's just going to be an all around just, just nasty mess. So uh, I actually have been looking online, trying to find some ideas, some fun things and activities for the kids to do. And I'm going to mention a bunch of them here, but I'm also going to post uh, links to them uh, in the blog post. So be sure and go to the, if you're not, if you're listening to this podcast, not on our website, please go to the singlemomblog.com and you will see this as one of the most recent podcasts. You can go to the podcast page. It should actually show up. Uh, depending on when you're listening to this, it's one of the most recent uh, podcasts, but uh, you'll be able to find it. Um, and it'll be surviving summer vacation, you know, day one or something like that. <laughs> so um, 
I, I went and I looked at, uh, you know, Pinterest and, and I have to say I, I'm sort of a 50-50 Pinterest person. I like Pinterest, but I also don't like Pinterest. I think Pinterest tends to give us some really high expectations of ourselves and what we should be able to do. I think like the, I see people on print Pinterest and I think to myself, I'm like, God, you have like the most amazingly organized room or you've come up with the most creative things. And I like sit there and I'm like, God, why am I not this creative? Do I just not have this much time on my hands or <laughs> kind of like what's going on? Do these people just have way more time on my hands and these and then I look at the parenting stuff. I'm like, God, these parents have it together way more than I do, I think. Um, so I love Pinterest because it definitely gives you some great ideas and things to try and, and really fun activities and beautiful projects and art and organizational tips. And there's so many wonderful things on it, uh, as long as you don't utilize it as a measuring stick to your own worth as a parent. And, that, and that's what I try to make sure I don't do. I find myself doing it quite often where I'm like, man, this mom was able to make this really cool thing out of recycled Kool-Aid packages or something. Like, why am I not that inventive? And, you know, it's just not everybody is. So as long as you're not using it as a way to, you know, you don't end up feeling bad about yourself as a parent because all these other people have these great ideas. <laughs> like, that's where I, I have a problem with Pinterest. But um, so some of the great fun things that I found... Uh, and I'll, I'll also put them up in my Pinterest. If you're not following me on Pinterest, um, there's a uh, Get Social link on the uh, website, on the blog. And you can follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, all those great places. So I will also put these on my uh, Pinterest page uh, under Summer Fun. It'll be under the Summer Fun uh, board. So one of the first ones that I found that's actually really, really cool because it speaks to like my creative side as well as my getting my kids to go outside and do some fun stuff uh is squirt gun painting it's so cool and i don't know why i never thought about this before but it is really fun it looks so much fun and it's on this website called fireflies and mud pies is where i found it which is a neat little website too i love um <clears throat> And uh, I think it was featured on Blog Her and some great little other places. But um, and it is so fun. It looks like they they basically filled up um, squirt guns with, I believe, watercolor. Yeah, they put watercolor paper and they put liquid watercolors into the guns, the various different guns, and they just squirted the paper. And they made kind of really pretty art. And it's so much fun. So this is probably going to be more fun for younger kids um, rather than teenagers. I think that there comes a time where, like, in your life, you are young enough to think something's cool. Then you're too old to think something's cool. And then you're old enough again to think something's cool. So, <laughs> like, when I was a kid, younger, around my daughter's age, this would have been so much fun for me, right? I would have loved this. I can almost hear my teenagers, though, telling me, Mom, that's silly. We're not going to do that. Like, they would totally look down their nose at this, potentially. But then I'm over here as an adult going, it looks like so much fun. <laughs> so I think that that's the way it goes. You're young enough to think it's cool. Then you're too old to think it's cool. And then you're older again, and you think it's cool. So who knows? But um, that one's definitely a fun little uh, experiment. So painting with squirt guns. So I definitely think we're going to try that and, uh, I'll probably do a blog post about it and show you the end result. So that'll be really fun. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Here is, uh, another one and it, uh, definitely looks like a lot of fun, but super messy fun. Um, and it's twister outside. Now, obviously this has to be done outside as the watercolor painting, obviously squirt gun painting outside, twister outside and that's where most of these are going to be is outside because I am fighting a never-ending struggle to get my children out the doors I don't know about you guys but my children they've been cooped up all winter long and they're like we're bored it's cold outside we don't want to do anything blah 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 and now that summer is here and in Colorado we had like a week and a half of just rain nothing but rain it was like living in Seattle it was ridiculous and now we're finally having, it's almost like we went from just nothing but rain to insta-summer. Like we skipped a lot of spring. <laughs> like we had snow all the way up until like mid-May. 
and then we had rain forever and then all of a sudden it's like boom 80 degrees here we are it's summer so we almost sort of skipped over spring really but um now that it's nice outside i'm like go outside and play well we don't wanna do seriously i you have done nothing but complain about being stuck indoors and now that it's nice outside i can't get you out the doors it's so frustrating so most of these are going to be outside events for enjoying the weather so this is actually twister with what looks like colored um shaving cream so <laughs> and it looks like so much fun so it i found it in like a sleepover uh post it's like a sleepover post but it's basically twister with colored shaving cream so it's like they took shaving cream and mixed in food coloring so they used green shaving cream yellow shaving cream blue shaving cream and red shaving cream and just put big dollops of it on the little twister circles and then i guess you just play twister and it's just a fun messy god awful mess but oh my god i think it would be so much fun <laughs> to see <laughs> so that's another fun one that uh, I think we may try uh, we'll see if uh, I have the guts to do that um, here is another one um, and this is actually indoors but it's something that I definitely want my kids to do because I remember doing this as a kid and it was so much fun uh, making rock candy yourself so I don't know if anybody ever did this when you were a kid where you would actually um, basically just make uh, colored sugar water and then you would either dip a string or a stick into the mixture and just let it sit and the, the basically the crystals form on the string or the stick and after a while you have a big stick or string of rock candy and I remember doing this as a kid and I just thought it was so cool because every day it was like watching crystals grow. It was like, oh, there's some sugar. Oh, look, there's more, there's more, there's more, you know. So it was really neat. And I think that would be kind of a really fun experiment for the kids to do. Um, really easy to do, very low cost, you know, sugar water, dental floss, string sticks, whatever, and, and mason jars or cups, whatever. But lots of fun and um, kind of science-y. So we're definitely going to be working on on that as well so I think that one's going to be a fun one and it, it's fun for me because like I said it brings back those memories of the stuff that I used to do as a kid and I really enjoyed you know <laughs> so <laughs> um here's another fun little project for outside sort of an artsy fartsy project uh it's uh, one it's called ladybugs versus tadpoles and it's a tic-tac-toe so it's sort of an outdoor project but it's artsy so um you paint sort of like a cut piece of wood or log or something of that nature you paint it um with blue and you basically kind of make a tic-tac-toe out of it and then you get um eight rocks and you paint four of them to look like frogs and the other four to look like ladybugs and you sort of play tic-tac-toe with the frogs and the ladybugs so that's a really neat little project that i think my daughter would really enjoy doing because she's eight and she likes to paint things and she loves ladybugs so that's a fun one that we're going to do. Um, and I found this on At A Girl Says blog, which is really, really cute. So hopefully, uh, and I'll, like I said, I'll put the link for it there. But definitely a lot of fun. Really super cute. So there's that. Now, um, here's another one that's really super fun. And hopefully we'll get my kids out the door. And it they're called Bubble Snakes. And it's basically... Uh, a water bottle, a sock, tape, and dish soap. soap. And you <laughs> kind of make this uh, mixture of soap and you put a sock around the bottom of a like water bottle that you cut the bottom off of. And so it could be just like a regular water bottle that you get from the store, uh, bottled water. And <clears throat> you cut the bottom off of it and you wrap a sock around it and you sort of secure it with a rubber band and then you dip it in like a, like a dish that has a little bit of water and dish soap and you soak it and then you blow through the sock and it makes these just bunches of bubbles like a snake of bubbles it's really really cute and fun and then you can add food coloring to the socks and it makes them rainbow colored or different colors and it's just a lot of fun so it's basically just a, a different way of blowing bubbles but super fun. So 
definitely a fun outdoor trick that we're going to do, I think. And so that's another. And I think anything that'll get my kids outside and kind of away from the TV and unplugged is definitely fun. Always has some positives to it, right? So then there's a, a couple of other things that um, kind of are good for the whole family. So there's one that I found called Build a Backyard Movie Theater. Now, I don't know if this is going to be feasible for us, so we'll have to see. But it looks like a lot of fun. I don't know if our backyard, if we have anywhere that we can actually do this with. Um, and I'm not even sure if uh, we could do it because it requires a projector. So if you have a projector, I guess it's kind of fun. But basically... You put up like a giant screen or a sheet or a big piece of poster board or something of that nature. And then you um, kind of lay out blankets and stuff or chairs and you use a projector to project a movie onto the sheet. So you sit out back and you watch a movie in your backyard, which is a lot of fun. Um, but I don't have a projection a TV projector, a movie projector type of thing. So I don't know if this is going to be doable, but... You know, we might be able to rent one for a night for fairly cheap. I don't know. I'll have to look into that and um, see if that's something that we can actually do. And if so, I'll definitely make a blog post about it so that we can uh, share our adventure on that one. But <clears throat> it looks a lot of fun. So I think anything that you can do sitting outside watching a movie, reminiscing on like old drive-in theaters is really cool. <clears throat> so... That is another fun one. Here's another neat idea that we found. And it was actually uh, because my kids love the sprinkler and playing in the sprinkler and running through the sprinkler. Um, however, they've also damaged about five sprinklers running through and jumping over it. And so they end up stepping on it and breaking it. So it no longer like oscillates or does anything. Um, so I, I found this one because it seems super fun um, and... Uh, cheaper than in me having to constantly buy a new sprinkler. Uh, but it's a way to kind of make a hanging sprinkler thing that kids can play with. Or it, it can lay on the ground, but you can hang it from a tree. You can do a lot of different things. But you do it with a pool noodle, which are, you know, those foamy pool noodle things. And what you do is you just jab and you stab holes into the pool noodle. And you just do a bunch of them into the pool noodle and then you stuff one end with a piece of foam or a plastic cap and you duct tape it. So you basically just make it so that the water can't get out through the other end. And then you basically put your hose in the other end and you push it in a few inches so it's there. And then you turn it on and it just sort of starts spraying water everywhere. And, you know, obviously you'd fashion the hose on one end so that it didn't fall out. Um, but it just sprays the water out like a sprinkler. And anyway, so it just looks like a lot of fun and definitely, like I said, cheaper and less expensive than me having to constantly buy a new sprinkler or two or three every summer. <laughs> so definitely looking into that. Now, some of the other ones that I found that are very, very cool, um, I like because it's, uh, well, I found one that was really neat that I enjoy because this is something that my kids do on a regular basis. They come to me and say, I'm bored. I'm bored. So I found these really neat things called board jars. And there's one called, uh, basically it's an I'm bored jar. And you, when somebody says, I'm bored, they have to go to the jar and find something to do. Now there's a couple of different variations on this. And here's my take on it. Um, and I'm debating which way to do this. Um, some of them are only just fun activities, right? Climb a tree, go play tennis, go visit the library, uh, read a book, create something new, draw something, right? So just things like ideas that they could to kind of inspire them to do something, right? The reason that I'm sort of split on this is because in my family, the way it was always done is if you came up to, and my grandmother was the one who started this, and I love her dearly for it, uh, <clears throat> if we ever came to her and said we were bored, she found something for us to clean. That was what happened. If you came to her, if you dared come to her in the summer and say, I'm bored, she would make you clean. And the woman was genius. Like, she was a genius because <laughs> we, 
we it never ever rarely after probably one or two times ever uttered the words we were bored around my grandmother because we knew she would make us do something that we hated and she got you know the floors mopped and things dusted like it just because we didn't so it was great for her she got housework out of it and we learned so quick and she could hear us like we would be in the backyard just sitting around and we're like i'm bored and she could hear us she had ears like a hawk she's like go get the dish rag and it's like damn she totally heard me so it was so funny but so that's where i'm kind of half and half so i think i want to do a board jar that's sort of like a grab bag right where it's like half fun things to do and half housework so if you say you're bored you're gonna go to the board jar and there's a 50 50 shot that you'll get something fun to do or chores (laughs) because i i kind of like both so i may have to to incorporate both so i'm not sure but it's definitely a neat idea because you know i don't care you know every kid sooner or later and if your kid never says they're bored oh my gosh you are so lucky and I wish that mine would never do it, but they constantly, and they've got so much stuff to play with. They've got games to play, books to read, things to draw, art crafts coming out the wazoo, but they will still come to me and go, I'm bored. So, mm, I don't know. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. But there are um, some other ones where it's just, it's like a piece of paper. And then there's some where they're using like popsicle sticks with like washi tape um and they can you can pick like different categories things we can do things we can make stuff like that and then they have others that are quiet time activities family activities outside play time fun with food so it's just a neat little like oh if you're bored go grab a stick from a certain category so it's really cute i like it it's definitely a neat idea um and fun for the kids if they say that they're bored so i definitely like that idea So that's definitely going to be one of the uh, other ones that uh, we put up. And then, of course, there's things like, you know, scavenger hunts and nature walks and, you know, camping and all the different things that we're going to do outside, hopefully, this year for summer. My daughter's summer was actually cut short because I guess they're changing the, uh, the schedule so that now the they start school sooner, earlier in the summer, so that they can get out for the year before Memorial Day, which is is kind of weird. I don't know what I think about that yet because uh, it definitely they their summer's getting cut down this year. I'm sure it'll be a lot more fun at the end of next year when they have to, um, I guess get out when they get out earlier. They get out around Memorial Day instead of. I guess later I don't know I'm still kind of on the fence about it but it's definitely interesting so we'll see how this goes um and I will play uh, I will definitely put up uh probably some other great fun little outside uh and inside things for summer so that uh you guys can get all of that extra ideas um but yeah like I said I mean Pinterest is a it's a neat place to go to get different ideas that you can do and I like the ones for summer because I don't you know you see all those Pinterest fails all the time like baking the cakes and stuff like that where the fails are just god awful and and you look at it and go oh my gosh oh my goodness so um but these ones since they're activities and they're not you know anything that you know I I like these a lot better because it's not like you have to be perfect at them and they're not expected to turn out in a certain way and you end up they don't end up looking at all like the pinterest image you know so you end up with another just horrible fail (laughs) Uh, but these are definitely very cool fun activities for outside for the kids to do and uh, enjoy so i hope that this will help them have fun outside or inside and keep them occupied and entertained and having a good time and uh kind of out of my hair not making me crazy while I try and get work done and then that'll just make life a little easier uh, so that I can get things done in a faster time frame and that'll give me more time to play with them and enjoy summer and do fun stuff so 
definitely a good thing to be able to do that. So I hope that this podcast was uh, a fun one for you, informative. There's definitely a lot of great things for kids out there to do during the summer and for families to do during the summer. I got to admit, there's some of these that I'm pretty excited about. So I hope that you enjoyed this and that you have some great ideas and inspiration from it. And if you are on the blog listening to this, or if you got this from the blog, or even if you're not, go to the blog. And in the comment section, let us know what are some of the fun activities that you guys do for summer? What are the things that you do uh, to help keep your kids from getting bored? What are the uh, toys and playthings and activities and crafts? What do you do to, to keep your kids entertained and have a good time during the summer? I really, really want to hear from you, and I love any time you guys give feedback or comments, and I hope that you have a wonderful summer. Ours is just starting. I hope, I know some people's kids are still in school, and uh, they're just getting to summer here pretty soon. So let us know how your summer goes, and check in, because like I said, I'm going to be doing some posts about surviving summer vacation (laughs) with my children. Some of the posts will be regular blog posts, some will be podcasts like this, and Hopefully they'll all be nice and upbeat and I won't be going crazy and absolutely insane by the end of it. And if I do, then, you know, hey, at least it'll be fun to listen to. (laughs) So have a great day. And uh, like I said, go to thesinglemomblog.com. Again, follow us on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, all of those places. We're going to post all the fun ideas that we have for summer and even more. There's always great ideas, tips, tricks, fun things to know. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Have a good day. You've been listening to the Single Mom Podcast, the place to go for support and encouragement and maybe a few laughs along the way. Please also make sure you head on over to the Single Mom blog for more great stuff for single moms. We have resources, free things to print out, great articles. Can't wait to see you there. Be sure to leave feedback and comments because we love hearing from other single moms. And if you like this podcast, please be sure to subscribe.